Welcome to Jackal DIY and Tech. Today I'll be building a budget mid-range PC using a small case, which is the John's Bow C6. So this will be the case, John's Bow C6 and ATX case. I made a review on it. This one is white. It also comes in black. It is full mesh. We don't want any scratches, so I'll put it like so. And we have the instructions and what's inside. And if you want, you also get the version with the handle on the top. So if you move the case a lot, want to take it with you, maybe some lamp worth it, you can get this version. Now this case is small, so you're very limited by what kind of a GPU you can put inside. So up to 255 millimeters. So don't expect to use high-end GPUs in this case. So you're limited to what kind of a GPU you can put inside. But before we do that, let's put in the motherboard. And this is not how you take this panel off. You first have to take the panel off using this by pushing down. But at the moment, I don't need that opening. The first thing that will go inside is obviously the motherboard. But before it does, maybe I just want to put everything else inside it. So I can put the disk inside. This is the Lexer NM620 M.2 NVMe. 512 gigabytes. So this is the disk. As you can see, it does come with a screw and no standoff because that is not an issue with the SSDs. The standoff has to be provided by the motherboard. It currently does not have one inside, but it does come with a standoff. Now where do we have to put it? On this motherboard, we do see some numbers. So we can simply take a look at what the SSD says. So it says 2280. So this is the hole that we have to screw this in. It came with the motherboard. Put it in under an angle. So it goes in easy. And then we'll simply push down. Put the screw in and tighten it a little bit. Don't tighten it too much. Next, let's go with the CPU and the cooler. We'll have to replace this. For the CPU, I'll be using Ryzen 5 5600. So this is the CPU. And inside here we have the cooler. Now you can use the stock one. It already comes with the paste applied. But I won't be using this one. I will use it just so I can test out the temperatures. Now that will be for a separate video when I'll be doing the testing. Otherwise the video will be too long. But as for the CPU cooler, I'll be using this classic from Thermal Red Low Profile AXP 120-X67 White ARGB Cooler. Inside we have some brackets that we have to replace and we'll do that now before you put the motherboard in and this also comes with its own thermal paste TF7 so this is what I need at the moment and because I'm using the AM4 CPU I'll be using the standoffs and screws so now I have to take this off and put these ones on and by the looks of this installation manual I have to put them in like so now this is super tight, I'll need a bigger screw driver. Now let's see if this one will do it. If we take a look at this now, well you only actually have one way how you can do this. So I'll just put them on. That one was a little tight. You may need to use quite a lot of force to untighten these. Just don't damage anything in the process. I can now put the CPU in. Leave the latch. Take it out. Now this is the old version of Ryzen. 
so it still has the pins on the CPU. The AM5 CPUs don't have the pins on the CPU. So line up this row with the row. Yeah, so the row here is this one. Otherwise, just also look at the pins where they have the holes. If I would put it down this way, I would have holes here, so that is not good. So I have to line it up like so. That's in. Just like that. So the CPU is in. Now I'll put in the memory sticks. And if we take a look at the guide, we have the installation guide for one sticks. You have to put it in B2. If you have two sticks, you use A2 and B2. And if you use four sticks while you put in every stick. So in my case, I'll be using two sticks of Vengeance LPX. So this is low height. 2 times 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz. Looks nice and slick. Opens easily and it also comes out easily. So we take a look at what is A1 to B2 and I need A2 and B2. So the gray slots on this motherboard. Doesn't matter which one you put in first. I just think I'll have a little bit easier way of doing it. If I do this one first and then that one. So that's done. And now the motherboard can go in. Almost, almost. You see this motherboard has some standoffs. We have one, two, three on the top. We have three holes on the top. In the middle, we also have three holes and three standoffs, but on the bottom, we don't have this standoff. This standoff does come the case, as you can see. So I'll take this one out and put it in. Now this case comes with the hex bolt. I didn't know what it was supposed to do. Basically you put this one in and you can tighten it with the screw. And while I'm at it, I'll take a look if all of the others were tight enough. So now I can finally put this motherboard inside the case. What they have in the instructions is that you take the front panel off, take these two plates off and put the motherboard in diagonally from the front. In this case, I'll just use this hole and put it in that way. This is the normal size mini ITX board, so every board should fit in the same way. It does depend on the I.O. But it will depend what is going on here. Some other boards have heat sinks and whatnot, and those might not fit in in the same way. As you saw, pretty easy. Now we'll simply line the holes up and put in the screws. Now we have a bunch of screws and washers. The washers are for the motherboard where you put in the screw, we put the washer on. I honestly have no idea why they decided to use washers because on all of the previous motherboards you just left the contact as is because the screw is supposed to be the ground. That's why it also has the tint contacts on the outside of the screw hole, so it makes ground with the case. And the other screws are for the SSD, if you use them, you have 8 screws, so for 2 SSDs. So that's in. I should probably now connect these wires to the motherboard, so that's done, the cabling will be a mess, I can already see that. Now before I put the GPU in, I'll have to put the fan in. And to do that, I'll have to unscrew the legs. On the outside of this case could be the legs, they are quite small. Also not the best system if you need to clean out the dust by taking this off. So this bracket that we have here, not truly really visible but it's screwed in with these screws. Now for the fans, I'll be using some TLC, also from Trimmel, right? And this video is not sponsored by them. 
This was just the cheapest fans that I could find. Otherwise, I would be using Arctic P12 fans. But those just don't exist. At least they aren't as cheap as they used to be. So let's see what we have inside. Oh, we have a lot of screws. Oh, they actually also come with this thing. Yes, that's awesome. And the fan itself. So this can come off. That's nice. They are rubbery. So this will prevent any noise, or at least most of it. That would transfer through. And they also come with either the screws or this rubbery bit. Now the first thing that you need to know is how the fan pushes the air. You can simply spin it and you will feel where the air goes. In this case it pushes downwards, so it goes down. So the bottom fan has to be like so. Also this motherboard comes with two fan headers. One is for the CPU and two you have extra, but I'll have three fans. So to connect multiple fans, you can use something like this. But it depends how you want to control the fans. So I can connect two fans to one header like this and one fan separately. Or I can just connect all fans to this and all of the fans will spin at the same speed. So the connector for the fan one is here. So it could go behind the GPU and one is on the top. I can see that this is high quality. They have everything put inside a protection. And the cable is actually long enough so it could also reach to the top. That is what I needed. Now you can put a 120mm fan here or a 140. In my case 140 would be probably pushing it. Because of the connections of the motherboard. But if you have an ITX motherboard then it's a lot smaller and you can also put that inside. Now this fan came with its own rubbery bits. I have some of these. So I'll use these ones and see how it goes. In this pack I have 12 of these which is enough for three fans. And I actually didn't know that these fans come with this. So that's it. I think I'll just use the connector down here and also this connector only one of them has four lines as you can see this connector has three this one has three this one has four so this is the main connector that will provide the pwm signal to both of these two fans so if you only connect two fans or one fan to this for some reason make sure you use the one with the four pins so if you only connect two fans or one fan to this, for some reason, make sure you use the one with the four pins. What I'll do now is I'll put on the front fan. I'll take this panel off. As you can see, you have holes for the SSD. I also have one. But if I want to use a fan here, I can't use the SSD. Because the holes are not the same size. And you can also use an HDD, as you can see. So you can either use one HDD or two SSDs or one fan. And you also have to decide how the fans will blow. So this will be an intake for the GPU, and that's a must. This one can blow in or out, and this one can also blow in or out. Just know that you don't have anything blowing on the back, so you may want to go with an exhaust on the front and also an intake on the top so all of the other components can also get some air flowing because this front will be blocked off by the power supply so basically you have a wall here and no air coming to the back so this fan as you can see doesn't fit we have to move the bracket unscrew the bracket now because I'll be using these, at least I hope they will hold, these are kind of a no-go here. Maybe if I use those, the original ones, so I can't use this on the front end. I also won't be able to use this 
on top. The original ones, as you can see, have a big recap, so hopefully this will fit. I think it does. And if you don't use the screws, you can then simply move the fan left and right. So this one will be the exhaust. So I'll turn it maybe this way. So I have the plug coming down. And let's see how it fits. So this will have to go to the left if I want to put in the power supply. So this also means that I have to put this fan on at the end. Otherwise I won't be able to make this connection. Let me then put the fan on the top. And this fan will be an intake. So it will be blowing down. So I can adjust it to the left or to the right. Because it's 120, if it was 140, I wouldn't really have much of a choice where to position it. And as for this cable, maybe I can actually put it behind. So this fan is kind of floaty, but it should be okay. As for the cable, I'll put it through the hole on the top, on the back. I do also have an SSD, so I need one SATA connection free. And I'll see where I'll mount it. Maybe I'll just use one of the holes here to screw it in. People also use this bracket to either mount an HDD or a SATA drive while also using a fan. So you can just make a new hole and position the SSD like that. Now I have to put in the CPU cooler, I think. So this is the fan of the CPU cooler. This one is 15 millimeters. It has the PWM signal, which is the CPU fan. And the other header that it has is for the ARGB. And you can also chain them if you have multiple of them. So this one actually can't connect. What? So I guess I can't use this. My ARGB fan doesn't have a connection like this with three pins. Mine has four pins, so I can't use it. Oh. For now, I'll be using this MX5 thermal compound on the CPU and then put the heat sink on. When you buy a cooler, make sure that this sticker is on. That means that it's protected and not scratched and most likely not second hand. So I changed the lighting a little bit. So I'll put this on, on the whole CPU and spread it. So now we'll first put on the CPU heatsink. It can go on in two ways. I could either position it like so, or hopefully I can position it over the memory sticks. If I can, that will mean that it won't get so much covered by the power supply. But we have to take this pill off. Hopefully I hit the screws. I guess I did this one. Let's see, did I say anything about the tension? So I guess tighten according to fuel. Now I'll put on this fan. Sadly, I can't use the RGB with that header. So we have these clips. We just need two of them. And hopefully the cables won't be in the way. So, so like that, and that's one. And that's two. So the fan should clip in quite easily. And I can connect this CPU fan header that looks okay. While I have the space, I think I'll put in the GPU and then I'll put in the fan. For the GPU, I'll use this Eno RTX 360 Ti. As you can see, it won't fit quite in the case. And that's because this box is huge. The GPU, not so much. So this is the GPU and as you can see, it's a lot smaller than it was inside the box. So first take this protection off and you will see that 
it will fit in just barely but before it can fit I also need to take this off so I can take these two screws out because the GPU will go into these two slots now the GPU goes in and as I said the cabling is a mess this cable for the audio is definitely too short At the very least, it should be long enough to go around the fence so it doesn't hit the GPU fence. So what I'll think I'll do is connect the last fan, but I'll position it at the end. So this fan will be blowing out. Hopefully I can put in the GPU without any issues. And when I put in the SATA drive, hopefully I won't have any issues. But because I won't be able to use the SATA 1 socket. No, that took a lot more work, but the GPU is finally in. On the fan, on the bottom sides, I would either have to cut this, or just push this in, so it's not over this hole, otherwise this ends would hit the fan. The cabling was also tough to do. I'll see if I'll hear anything. This cable should definitely be longer, this is for the audio, so that it would go behind the fan, that might be hitting the fans. So I have the CPU in, the heatsink, the GPU in, two fans in, now I have to connect the power supply, and lastly the fan. At this point maybe I can do some measurements, so at the front with this heatsink I have four and a half centimeters to this bracket, on the top to the fan I have three and a half centimeters to the GPU, two and a half centimeters and to the end of the case nine centimeters. What about the height? About eleven centimeters. For the power supply I'll be using this high current gamer from Entech. 850 watts, it's an overkill, but it's what I have. So it comes packaged like this, and this is how it looks like. Nice looking unit, and we'll see how it fits inside the case. So the fan has to be on the outside, and that is how this is made. So it fits snugly against the top fan, which is maybe not ideal. So we'll be again using the screws and the washers that come with the case. Do you see the mistake that I've done? I do. The motherboard has no I.O. shield. And also as you can see I have a gaping hole here, that's because I'm using a mini ITX motherboard that is full size and the GPU slot is down here. This is probably for the ITX board. But at least now I have an excuse to take the computer apart and maybe do some adjustments or testing. If you don't want to see a comparison between this CPU cooler and the stock one, let me know. Because if I want to do this test, I have to take the motherboard out now let's see how this cabling will go. Maybe I would have to do the cabling first and then screw the power supply in. Who knows? I never built in this case. No idea how I connect it because it's huge, especially if I want that fan in the front. And the challenge will be connecting this cable behind the PSU to the CPU socket. Maybe I'll be able to do it from the top. And another one for the GPU. Or actually, this one is CPU, this one has CPU, CPU on it. This one that I've used just has PCIe, PCIe, so this one is for the GPU. Yeah, there was no way I would be connecting this in. So as you can see, this is a great case if you're on a budget, because you can also use an ATX power supply, but if you just like the case and have a bit of a bigger budget, you can also use a small frame factor power supply 
that you then mount on the top and you can then also use a tower cooler instead of a low profile cooler which means that you will also get airflow from the front to the back and the only thing that you have to do in this case is close off the hole otherwise you could also use a ATX to small form factor adapter and mount the small form factor power supply here while this power supply is good the connectors are very tight so you don't really have a lot of room when it comes to positioning as you can see and now let's take a look see what we can do about the front fan and this snake it will kind of suck if I can't use the front fan so I managed to get the fan inside at the moment pretty much the cables are holding it in place and I wouldn't be able to position it down any further because of the power supply cable so let's flip it around so you see so the power supply connector to the motherboard is in the way of this fan or for this fan so if you use a full size mini ATX motherboard the best way that you can connect the fan is all the way to the end and you can only use a 120mm one and as you can see it's pretty much being held in place by all of the cables but I'll still be using this rubber bit I could also use the screws but I don't like using those now if you want to build in this case what I suggest to do is if you use a mini ITX board is that you don't use the whole sized one maybe try to find a smaller sized mini ITX board that would be one thing the second thing would be to use SFX power supply so it's smaller and then you can maybe also use a dual tower CPU cooler so you also have some additional airflow so this is pretty much it I honestly have no idea why they implemented this if it's for the first time use when you do the installation it doesn't really matter because you can put your hand in through the PSU hole otherwise this just gets in the way and you can't really do anything anyway once you have this assembled and if you open this well what can you actually do if I was to install the SSD that I still have lying around where could I actually put it? I can obviously put it on the sides. These two holes are still free. So I could use one hole. So I just need to connect the SATA SSD to the power supply. And I think this is the shortest cable. I think that should do it. Everything is now inside the case. Well, mostly. That's all things that I forgot. They're obviously the IO shield and this protection or the dust cover it. I will put this back on, put on the fit. So on the bottom where I've used the standoffs for the fan, these rubber ones, they poke out a little bit so the dust cover is not flush with the chassis. If I use this one, So this is the Jansbo C6, I have some work to do, but for now I'll just do some basic tests and do some installs.